Okay, so now <coughs> in this uh, very short uh, introduction to quantum computing, we will discuss something regarding uh, quantum algorithm. There are plenty of quantum algorithms now. Uh, but in this discussion, we will take a representative one, which is known as Grover's search algorithm. This is something that we could be able to, we would be able to relate to our uh, classical one, uh, counterpart, which is a database search. Now consider there is a database. We all have done this at some part, part of our time. So we have a database with n names and there are for each of the name there are fields associated with the name so we want to find one name at random so this is very important to note that we find a particular name in random order okay and we want to retrieve the fields that are associated with the name say for example a telephone number okay so this is a very common problem in database and we all know that classically it would require how many so say, say for example you have about five names and you want to find a random name out of it it could be the first try you could find that random name in the second try you could find the random name in the third try. So, and at max, you will have to try it in times. So, an average number of, average number of steps that you might require is n by 2. Okay, to find the required entry. Now, um, now just with this problem, there is no smarter way. And if we want to express this term <coughs> in our algorithmic um, time expression which is a big o number we write it usually like this so a brute force search would require this many steps right? now come love grover He devised a quantum algorithm. Quantum search algorithm. And how many steps it takes for in items? It takes O square root of N. Okay, now you see that square root of n means n to the power half. So it is a, this is something that we say a polynomial speed up. So how does this speed up looks like? Suppose you have 49 names. A brute force search will take 49 steps. Grover's search will take 7 steps. So that much fast it is. Okay. So
So for a very large number, for very large n, we would, we would get significant speed up. All right. So how does this problem <coughs> um, get formulated? So suppose we have a system n equal to 2 to the power l states. It is not very difficult to think about such a state. So if l is equal to 1, then n is 2. If l is equal to 2, then n is 4. If l is equal to 3, then n is 8, like that. So this many states. So suppose we have l equal to 1, that means it is 0 and 1. So we have only two states, 0 and 1. If you have l equal to 2, that means each of them can take 0, 1, 0, 1. So we will have four, four states, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this way, n grows. All right. So now each state can be labeled as an L bit string. L is how much? 2 here. So L bit string is this. So we have four, four states, but each can be represented in an L bit string. Suppose these strings are S1, S2, S3, S4. So in our case, this L bit string, so each state labeled as S1, S2, and so on. Right? So for n equal to 4, there are 4 states. So for n equal to n, there will be n states. All right. And the state we want, suppose this is the state that we want. This is our search item. We are looking for this among these four. All right. So <clears throat> this state that we want is, suppose it is SM. This satisfies a condition that some condition is m is 1 for n equal to m for n equal to m okay, 3 and for any other it is 0. This essentially means okay so for n equals to 1 this is not the state we look at so it is 0 for n equal to 2 this is not the state we look at so it is 0 for n equals to 3 yes m is also 3 this is the state we look at so this is 1 for n equal to 4 m equal to 3 this is not the state we look at so it is 0 so this is the condition that the state is in that we are looking for satisfies. So now the problem is to identify this SM. And we know that with these same conditions, the classical brute force search will take n steps. So how Grover algorithm looks like. So we start in Grover algorithm, we start with L qubit register in state. We start with L qubit register. So a logical zero looks like zero, 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 and so on. Until L. Suppose L is three. 
what will be n 2 to the power l which is 8 so that means this we have a register l 1 2 3 let's name them q1 q2 q3 and these are initialized to 0 0 0 so that means this is 0 0 0 okay so q1 q2 q3 together will be 0 0 0 okay now what we'll do we will apply Hadamard transformation okay so we will apply a Hadamard gate here a Hadamard gate here and a Hadamard gate here so we know that when we apply Hadamard gate <coughs> to a set of qubits initialized to zero what it does it generates a superposition of all possible states okay a superposition of all possible states means that when we will measure we will find for this three qubit we will find eight states one two three four five six seven eight eight states and these states will look like zero 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 one and so on like one 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 like that and this length of this <coughs> sticks it means this is the probability of finding this state as a measurement outcome okay so equal probabilities so we call this a superposition of all possible states now what we'll do so we will mathematically represent this as uh of zero 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 as one by two into l by two if it is 1 then 1 by 2 to the power 1 by 2 if it is L then it is 2 to the power L by 2 and 0 plus 1 to the power L this can be <coughs> simplified as 2 to the power L by 2 Sigma n equal to 0 to 2 to the power L minus 1 of N okay now what we will do we will do for square root of N times Or square root of n times so you can relate this to this this one right for square root of n times what we'll do we will apply an operator u n Now this UM is defined as 
u m of n n is n essentially means that any of these uh, states okay, any of these states so u m of n it's a unitary operator is actually n for anything for any n which is not the one that we are searching for but if it is the one for for the uh, one we are searching for this will become minus n okay so what will happen if we do that so use a operator um Rather, you can say like this, but you can. What we will do? It will not touch, say, for example, we are looking for this one. It will not touch this, it will not touch this, it will not touch this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and this one will become this. So, this will be the overall state of these three registers okay the one we are looking for becomes negative all right so now in for each of this square root of n steps we do another thing we then apply grover's diffusion operator this diffusion operator looks like uh ud uh uh is nothing but a hard mark so uh, it's a basically an operator we, we devise that operator we are not going to those details in this very short introduction we will expand all these things in uh, subsequent lectures <clears throat> so we sandwich these things in two different uh, two independent Hadamard transformation so this does a unique thing what it does is that this uh, it corresponds to basically a reflection of all the amplitudes about their means now since this one is below we can say that probably the average if we take the average of all these amplitudes it will probably stand in here so this is the average amplitude so what this does so this is something that happened because of un and what this does is that um, I should have drawn it rather lower, but let's shift a little bit. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this one it reverses it. If it gets reflected along this line, so what will come up? This one will come up. So this one will become this. This one will become this, this one will become this, this one will become this, 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 and this one will get reversed like that. So I am drawing it a little bit by shifting. This will become like this peak. So once we apply the diffusion operator, the entire state of these three resistors will look like this. And which one has the highest probability of getting measured? This one. So this operation essentially amplifies 
the amplitude at the expense of the others okay now uh, so this grover's algorithm is um, people has pointed out um, the experts in quantum uh, computing and quantum mechanics of course they have pointed out that this grover algorithm is a general class of amplitude enhancement amplitude enhancement type of quantum algorithms so that's why we actually selected the global search algorithm because we can relate it very easily with the database searches but one thing we have to keep it in mind that for our standard database search however big it is global algorithm will not be very suitable and why is that because for a conventional database what we have to do that we have to transfer all the data into a quantum database okay and that itself takes o to the power n time basically uh, when you when we say quantum database all we essentially mean that we have a uh, lots of data which is classical data we have to take this data we have to apply this data to this qubits how many steps that would require that would require n steps already okay so it will not be very effective for uh, in doing that okay but it could be effective in crypto analysis in ds encryption system where we want to find um, so for a, a, to search a large array of keys so we have a large array of keys and we have to search a specific either one or a few specific keys and this would take years okay but this transferring of this data will not take years so temporal wise number of execution wise yes so it will take n, n steps but time wise it may not be so once you transfer this, this this thing a quantum computer could reduce the search time from thousands of years to minutes So, this is an idea of the quantum algorithm, how it looks like in our, this introductory lecture. Once we go through the uh, um, <clears throat> bigger lectures, we will actually study many, many different algorithms. So, we have with that we have come to uh, <clears throat> quite an uh, end of this series of lecture i mean this is a very fast moving field and by now we have different physical realizations of quantum logic kit like we have universal type of quantum computers we have quantum annealing type of quantum computers now today the forerunners are uh, like ion traps. So, ion trap type of quantum computers. I will deal with these separately as well. Ion trap, then cavity QBD. We had NMRs before. It's still very popular in the in the um, <coughs> labs quantum computing labs so it's ensemble quantum computing we had like say in if I mean and this is um, this, all these things which have been happening for a pretty long time like 
saying in 1994 um, yeah in 1994 uh, it's, uh, I think it's uh, David Wineland David Wineland and uh, Boulder uh, in Boulder, they demonstrated a kind of CN gate. Using beryllium ions, right? two qubits. So they took two, two two beryllium ions and the two lowest energy levels. If these ions basically are are confined in linear, linear array in an ion trap and cooled to very low temperature, you know that this quantum uh, computing we require very very low temperature because at the very low temperature only it is possible to have stable energy levels of atoms or electrons which are the quantum systems that they if the temperature is high they uh, they kind of move about so so hence there are there are requirement of the various different types of cooling techniques like in our traps it's laser cooling techniques that are used we will learn all these in detail <clears throat> so this is uh, like cn gate then uh, it, it got improved like in the with the photons in the cavity we uh, they demonstrated the conditional phase rotations for two qubit system that was done by two shade in the same year I think then uh, we know about the conventional NMR machines they manipulates many molecules in a buck So at the individual levels in this NMR, the individual levels, if we can consider them as a qubit, there is no control. But we uh, NMR operations uses very clever manipulations so that we can effectively isolate pure qubit states. So all these things are happening, there are lots of uh, <clears throat> different kinds of algorithms like Grover's, Deutsch's algorithms on two qubit systems. They came up and at present we know that in IBM, in uh, companies like IBM, Google, D-Wave, companies like that then there are uh, Honeywell all these implements different types of UBs like IBM and Google is uh, develops a qubit which is uh, known as the transmon type of qubits DUA works in the quantum annealing systems Honeywell works in iron traps. Lots of developments has been happening. IBM has a platform. Google also has a platform to interact with quantum computers. Right? Okay. Um, through computer programs mostly in, in pythons okay. and so are there are lots of business use cases that we could not venture before that we can currently can think of to transform a business case we transform this to a suitable quantum system 
which we can apply on a quantum computer of suitable strength and then guess the business results or at present we can actually predict what we what can be the nature of the results when we'll have a really suitable computer currently we do not have a suitable computer currently we have the quantum computers where we can do only lab level experiments okay lab level experiments hence this time this is a high time for all of us to get ready uh, with the knowledge regarding the quantum computers so that when the real quantum computers comes along we will have uh, a lot number of resources who can work directly on the quantum machines so currently we can do the lab level experiments and that can predict uh, what would be the nature of the results when we'll have a bigger computer okay. so many exciting avenues are getting opened um, computer scientists the quantum physicists electronic photonic engineers are working on this field so like just we said about the Kruger search algorithm this can be expressed in terms of a, a probabilistic version a probabilistic stick version of what's a dixra okay dixra's calculus okay and derive closed forms like closed forms for its uh, for its convergence all right there are new fields coming up with quantum compilers we'll elaborate on all these topics one by one in our future lectures the quantum compilation what is quantum compilation is the business of translating translating a quantum abstract quantum algorithm translating an abstract quantum algorithm to to the <clears throat> to the operations right so suppose you have an implementation technology which is like a platform it's uh, say for example the transform key or quantum handling or ion traps these are different uh, kinds of quantum computer and the gates that are used are all different types they realized with different mechanisms so what the quantum compiler will do, it will take the quantum algorithm, it will see, okay, so this is an iron trap, and it will then uh, translate these two operations right, that are needed to implement the algorithm. in the quantum computer okay so if it's iron trap it will do the operations suitable to implement the algorithm in the iron trap quantum computer like that so like say for example in nmr what we have to do is that we have to do the Hadamard transformation we have to translate we have to do the Hadamard translation in a very particular way to um, a specific set of NMR magnetic pulses. The same thing that we have to do in the transmon gate is that we have to uh, send suitable microwave pulses 
to the transmon qubit to perform the same kind of thing so for nmr it was um, sending the magnetic field pulses and for transmon qubits it is sending the micro pulses so these are the two different things so yeah so there is basically uh, no end to it if we want to talk in this way we can go along for hours but the idea was just to make you uh, familiar a little bit with the very very initial phase of the quantum computing what happens there so that's why it is called a very short introduction to quantum computing there are lots and lots of things which you will come and uh, complete one by one so followed by this we will take a one level deeper um, attempt to quantum computing and that will be a short introduction to the quantum computing there we will cover more about the gates more about the signature algorithms not all the algorithms signature algorithms what we do there um, so we'll learn a little bit deeper on the quantum mechanics the things that we uh, needed to know for quantum computing like we will uh, look up on the polarization photon polarization and things like that state spaces and uh, we will look at some very important field like quantum key distribution right teleportation uh, we will also look at a at a deeper look into the epi paradox that we talked about it is essential for us to to know about know more about the entanglement in the complex quantum gates um, dense coding and things like that and some uh, more knowledge regarding the different types of quantum computers what quantum parallelism essentially means then Shor's algorithm as a signature algorithm so we will study Shor's algorithm, Dosh's algorithm then the, uh, in doing Shor's algorithm we have to cover the quantum Fourier transform so QFT which is a very important thing for us to know we will also take a deeper look at the Grover search algorithm and how do we implement a heuristic search with quantum computers uh, moving amplitudes then we will also touch upon a very very important field called the quantum error connection so that would be our short introduction to quantum computing and after completing that we will go in each of the topics we will go at a very very deep level.